This is Eyewitness News at 10. Hello, Katie. I'm Sean Kubner. And I'm Donna Montgomery. Thanks for joining us tonight. The oil spill that was triggered by the loss of the Deepwater Horizon was the worst in this nation's history. And if you ask the state and federal government, they will tell you the worst is over and the Gulf of Mexico is back to normal. Yeah, at least that's what the government's been telling us. But a new report just out has revealed some very disturbing findings. Elevated levels of dangerous chemicals found in the crude oil that came from the Deepwater Horizon is now being found in our blood. Wilma Subra has been testing water and soil samples in Acadiana for four decades, and what she says she sees in this latest study concerns her. Well, I'm very concerned because from the very beginning we've been getting responses from these individuals about how sick they are. Subra is talking about a blood study that was conducted on four males, ages 3 to 43, and one female, age 38, in December of last year. Subra says the results of those tests revealed elevated levels of six toxic and potentially life-threatening chemicals, chemicals associated with crude oil, most notably ethyl benzene, which have been linked to kidney damage and cancer. All right, so what are the chances that the report is all bull, that these people just came forward because they're looking for a check? Well, there are three factors that make that not very likely. First and foremost, these individuals didn't know each other. They come from different walks of life. They come from different communities. In fact, some of the people come from different states. Some of them are from Mississippi. But they all complain about the same health problems. And they all, more importantly, show the same chemicals in their blood chemicals that can be traced directly back to the crude oil that came out of the deep water horizon. We know this not from laboratory testing done at one lab here in Acadiana, but from laboratory testing done at three separate labs located across this country. So in short, not one lab knew what the other two labs were working on. The final analysis is these results are not only credible, they're reason for concern. We had no idea. We thought we wouldn't find anything, but we're finding this. Um, in people's bodies and um, of course they're very concerned about their future and their future health and what this means to their families. As the executive director of Lean, Mary Lee Orr is doing all she can to get the word out about these latest results and the health problems her organization says these chemicals pose. Not only to those who have already come forward but those who are still out there and may not realize what they're carrying around as a result of exposure to crude oil from the spill. Chest pains is common, uh, dizziness, respiratory problems, bruising, swelling, things like that. So how are these chemicals from the crude oil getting into people's blood? Well, the scientists say the two most common methods of exposure are either direct contact by skin, you're touching it, or you're breathing in, breathing in the vapors. But ingestion, eating food already contaminated with these chemicals, is another source of contamination that scientists say they have verified. And that's one of the worries that this study is bringing out. We'll have more on just how safe our seafood really is coming up Thursday in Eyewitness News. That is a story that everybody has been talking about, and you are only going to see it right here on Eyewitness News. Last night, we revealed the disturbing results of a recent study indicating elevated levels of several toxic chemicals being found in crude oil from the Deepwater Horizon showing up in people's blood. So how's it getting there? The leading scientist in charge of the study says the chemicals in question can leach into a person's skin, they can be inhaled, or they can be ingested. And that third possibility, eating it, is what concerns researchers the most, because they contend that sensory studies, so-called sniff tests conducted by state and federal governments, were not enough to determine if Gulf seafood is safe to eat or not. Right, and a lot of the tissue samples that we collected and analyzed didn't have an odor and didn't have visible oil, but yet had huge quantities within the tissue of both the hydrocarbons and the polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons. Subra says she's worried about the cumulative effects of those chemicals building up in the body. She also says the Food and Drug Administration's current safe consumption guideline for Gulf shrimp, get a load of this, is based on a 175-pound man who eats no more than four to six shrimp per week. The question now is what animals were included in that study? Well, KLFY TV 10 Eyewitness News anchor Julie Darcy explains. 
In August, chemists prepared a patrol boat, and they made a total of nine sampling trips from the western edge of Terrebonne Parish to the Louisiana-Mississippi line and collected over 50 samples. And of all the seafood they tested, here's a list of the top five with the highest amount of petroleum hydrocarbons. At number five is fiddler crabs, or periwinkles, or snails, out of Terrebonne Parish. Number four is shrimp from St. Bernard Parish. Number three, oysters from Terrebonne Parish. Number two, oysters from Plaquemines Parish. And the seafood with the highest amount of petroleum hydrocarbons, or about 21,000 milligrams, was found in the flounder and speckled trout collected from St. Bernard Parish. For KLFY TV 10 Eyewitness News, I'm Julie Darcy. Now, lean officials said the seafood tested had no visible signs of contamination, nor did it have an unusual odor. Governor Bobby Jindal also weighed in on this study, and we'll hear from him tonight at 10 on Eyewitness News. That study raises some serious questions about the safety not only of seafood, but of the coastline and marshes around the Gulf as well. But for all the questions that the study raises about safety, it also raises a few about the study itself. KLFY TV 10 Eyewitness News reporter Sean McGinnis now joins us live with more on that. Sean. Thanks, Chuck. Well, this study done by the Louisiana Environmental Action Network shows unusually high levels of a chemical used in oil dispersants during the oil spill and also unusually high levels of hydrocarbons from petroleum in seafood. But not everyone is convinced of the danger just yet. A study organized by the Louisiana Environmental Action Network suggests that not only is seafood possibly contaminated, but that people may be as well. UL Lafayette professor Paul Clerks is an expert in environmental toxicology, and he says the high levels of ethyl benzene found in human patients is alarming, but he doesn't believe it's reason to panic just yet. This is potentially cause for concern, but it's a very small sample size, only five people, and it's really hard to tell uh, with just a small sample size, what it really means uh, as a whole. Clerks said he'd also like to know which area the tested seafood was collected from. Lean director Mary Lee Orr says most of the seafood tested came from uncontaminated areas. The Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries has seen the study and denies the conclusions from it completely. In an email sent to TV10, the WLF said they closed oil contaminated areas and kept fishermen out, didn't reopen contaminated areas until seafood was found to be safe, haven't found any contaminated seafood, and will continue to test seafood in the coming years. Essentially, the WLF says there is no danger on the coast or in seafood in open fishing areas. On the other hand, Clerks says these tests may be cause for concern, but more tests need to be done. They do, uh, they do point out potential issues, but we need to do a lot more research for, bo for both of those areas. Um, th at this point, we need to do a lot more sampling to get a better idea of, of really how important uh, these issues are that are brought up in, this, in these studies. But until those studies can be done, Clerks gave a word of advice to seafood lovers. I would say buy seafood from reputable sources. Don't go out and collect it yourself in areas that you're not really sure about that are open for harvesting. We'll have much more coming up on this study tonight on Eyewitness News at 10. Reporting live in studio, I'm Sean McGinnis, KLFY TV 10, Eyewitness News. Thanks, Sean. Turning to other news now, District Attorney Mike Harson met with HUD officials earlier today to discuss legal matters regarding the Lafayette Housing Authority. Harson